This is the Hentai Happy Podcast. It seems that the once composer for the Mega Man Rockman series, Makoto Tomozawa, is hinting towards a release of the cancelled Rockman-3 via crowdsourcing and asking fans if they really wanted. Hell yeah, in parentheses. The series was coming off of a high note with Mega Man Legends 2 which now commands a hefty sum of banknotes in order to add it to your repertory. But, somehow, Capcom forgot the series in favor of its more mainstream titles, like Resident Evil, Street Fighter, and Devil May Cry, until the last part of the first decade of the 2000s. Most notably, the last time I even heard about the game, I was a NeoGAF forum member, and there was this huge Unity 3 engine circle jerk thread where people were invited to work on the game themselves. This somehow backfired because Capcom claims that there was a lack of interest in the IP, and not many volunteers came forward. However, that couldn't have been further from the truth. There were many professional devs working on it, but suddenly Capcom pulled the plug, leading many people to believe that Capcom itself had ulterior plans for the IP. I mean, they were trying to get people to make the game and then charge them for it later. This came at a time when Capcom was one of the most hated companies for making DLC the norm. Before that, we had what we called expansion packs, which were new games in of themselves. Remember, Majora's Mask itself started out as Ocarina of Time's expansion title for the elusive 64 disc drive, 64 DD. I always wondered why A.G. Anuma had one year with the assets as a time limit. Probably because the 64 DD failed to come to fruition and Shigeru Miyamoto was, you know, a b- I myself own the original Mega Man Legends and have nothing but fond memories concerning my playtime with it, giving me a perspective on some of the Japanese culture, such as the real Japanese shopping districts, which are practically identical such as the real Japanese shopping districts, which are practically identical to those found within the game. I say playtime because once my mother bought me the game on a discount price of $19.99 from Kmart, that was still around back then, I was but a tender single digits old. I love the vibrant colors, but could never get myself to defeat the bosses, even the ones in the first town. All I would do was shoot those Lego-like minions, and even then, I would risk tremendous failure. I think I was stuck in the sewers at one point or another and finally managed to get to the shopping districts. Boy, did I love the backdrops of the static shops and the music of the 90s. Those were fun heartwarming times. Just the palette of the 90s anime was just beautiful, and I think Mega Man Legends embodied that flavor, which is why it is always a delight to see the game assets and the art. I think games and movies in general today, 2020, 2012 to 2020, have moved to a nauseating, muddy, brown, bloody, burgundy tinged texture palette. So when a game like Zelda Breath of the Wild and another game like Genshin Impact come out, it's no wonder they are huge successes. As we speak, some companies like Ubisoft are trying to emulate the art style with the release of the game Immortal Phoenix Rising. I mean, the game looks good, but does it play well? That's another question. I don't want the art style to be fatigued by mediocre titles. Even the demo of 
Red Ash by today's standards from Keiji Nafune, whose new company, Comcept, now a level 5 company, was kind of bland and lacked the vibrant colors that made its spiritual predecessor stand out. That said, the concept art of the anime Red Ash, the inedible legend, is quite muddy and bloody brownish reddish as well. What is with the industry today using this terrible blend of colors? It even adds to the feeling of urgency surrounding the current state of affairs. It's not a delight to look at. I don't understand the appeal of such a color scheme. It will only act as a deterrent to me and perhaps others who grew up loving the Blue Bomber before he split off to become two heroes at once, with the original creator fading into obscurity, but not before making a Mega Man clone for the Sega Mega Drive. And I'm not talking about Mega Man, Proto Man, or Zero. I'm talking about Beck and Mega Man. Will Mega Man Legends 3 ever be successfully realized to completion? From what we can tell now, Capcom has actually redeemed itself in the eyes of many with the sleeper hit Mega Man 11, a title truly deserving of the recognition from the main series. However more, some say that Zero, the Maverick Hunter, has overtaken the Blue Bomber, which would make sense as red schemes are in for 2020, and blue is somewhat passé. Watch out, Mega Man, he's moving in on your girl. This was Hentai Happy. Thank you for watching the video. I'll catch you in the next one. If you liked the video, I urge you to subscribe, share, comment, and like the video. I'd like to give a special thank you to my channel supporters, Caleb Stewart, William Jackson, and Susanna Snow. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Is the Hentai Happy Podcast. Brotherhood, 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 brotherhood. It is man made.